Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at synthetic division. Synthetic division is a shortcut for the long division algorithm of polynomials, but it's very specific because it only works when the divisors are of the form x minus k. So the divisor, remember, that's the thing that's be doing the dividing. So we have the dividend divided by the divisor. And if the divisor is of that form where it's just x, it's a linear factor, x minus some value, then we can use synthetic division. If it's anything else, we cannot and we must use long division. So in these four questions, which ones can we use synthetic division for? The first one, we have f of x equals, and then here's our dividend, which we don't care about necessarily. And then here's our divisor. So is x plus two, is that a linear factor where the leading coefficient is one? Yes, it is. So yes, we would be able to use synthetic division. In our second example, here's the dividend. Here's the divisor, x squared plus one. Is that a linear factor? And the answer is no, it's not because of the x squared. The square ruined it. In our third example, we have the dividend up here and the divisor down here. Is x plus one a linear factor? Yes, it is. So we would be able to use synthetic division. And the last example, we have our dividend here, and our divisor is 2x minus 3. While it is a linear factor, it's not in the appropriate x minus k form because of that 2. We would not be able to use synthetic division. Now, you're probably thinking, cool, now I know what I can use synthetic division for, but how do I do synthetic division? I have the, the steps on the next slide, and I'm just warning you, they're long and it looks complicated, but actually synthetic division is it's pretty nice. So while the steps might look scary and intimidating, it's really not that bad, so bear with me. Okay, so how do we do synthetic division? Write the k of the divisor, x minus k, on the left. So we would put k over here. Next, we're gonna create an upside down division bar. Now, when I say upside down division bar, I'm talking about, as, uh, as an American educated person, I learned to, to use this as my division bar. Um, I know in other cultures and other countries, they do it differently. So I'm just saying it's upside down in terms of my American education. So what we do is we create it like this. Okay. Write the coefficients and constant of the dividend in descending order, and we include all values. So if there's a term missing, if we have a degree three polynomial, but there's no degree two term, then we would put a zero as the placeholder there. So I don't actually have anything written here. So we're going to say a sub n. Um, times x to the n plus a sub n minus 1, 1 times x to the n minus 1 plus blah 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 plus a squared times x squared plus a sub 1 times x plus a sub 0. So what we would do is we would take these coefficients and we would line them up on the same line as k. And notice that there's going to be a little gap underneath it. So we're going to say a sub n, a sub n minus 1, whatever other coefficients there are. If you need to put a 0, you put a 0 there a sub 2, a sub 1, and a sub 0. So that's how we set it up. Next, we bring down the leading coefficient. So we're just going to move this straight down underneath our division sign. So like, if this was a right side up division, this is where the quotient would be, and it's the same thing. This is where the quotient is, sort of. We'll, we'll talk about it. Okay, then we're going to take that, and we're going to multiply it to k. So we take a sub n, we multiply it to k, and we write it under the next coefficient. So we're going to say a sub n times k. Now this is where the, the notation is going to get really awkward, so I'm going to stop actually writing it, and I'm just going to start circling where I'm talking about. Then we add the values in the second column, so we would combine these two numbers and we will put the sum right here. Now we're going to take that sum and we're going to multiply it to k, and we're going to write that underneath the next coefficient, so there would be a space in there, so this is going to be k times, I'm going to do a triangle because it's not going to be the same as this, and then we would add these, and we would uh, take this result, which is going to be a square, and we would multiply the square by k. We would add these. So we just keep uh, bringing down, multiplying, putting here, adding. So we repeat until we finally get to the end. The bottom row, so this row here, is the quotient. And the first term is one degree less than whatever we started with in the dividend. So the dividend was of degree n. That means that this will be a sub n, this is the new coefficient of the leading coefficient of the um, div, uh, quotient, but the exponent is one fewer, because we took one away, right? We were dividing by something linear, so we were taking one exponent or way, you know, one, one factor away. Okay, like I said, it can be a little complicated, but let's look at an example and hopefully this, this clarifies. 
So we're going to take, here's our dividend, and here's our divisor, and we know that we can use synthetic division because x plus 1 is a linear factor with a leading coefficient of 1. When we set this up, we're going to take k. In this case, k is negative 1. We need to be really careful about that. It's like the opposite of what we see. And then we're going to put our dividend. We have negative x. Sorry, we don't put x to the fourth. We just put the coefficients in constants. So we're going to put negative 5. Now there's no x cubed, so we put a 0 to represent x cubed, right? Because we could say that negative x, negative 5x to the fourth is the same as negative 5x to the fourth plus 0x cubed plus 0x squared plus 0x plus 0. So those would be our coefficients and constant. So we have x cubed, x squared, x constant. We bring down the first coefficient, negative 5. Now we multiply. Negative 1 times negative 5 is 5. Now we add 0 plus 5 is 5. Multiply. Negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. Add. 0 plus negative 5 is negative 5. Multiply. Negative 1 times negative 5 is 5. Add. 0 plus 5 is 5. Multiply. Negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. Add. 0 plus negative 5 is negative 5. Now the reason this just ended up alternating, this is not always going to happen, is just because our dividend was one single term, so that kind of made this very look very awkward. Now, these are the coefficients and constant of, and the remainder, of the quotient function. So the way we're going to write the quotient function, remember this is going to be one degree less than the dividend, so this is going to be negative 5x cubed plus 5x squared minus... 5x plus 5 minus, and this one is the remainder. So remember how we write remainders? We take the remainder and we write it over the uh, divisor. So this would be x plus 1. Whoops, sorry. And this would be our quotient function, so we'll call it q of x. There it is in all its glory. Now again, this one wasn't the greatest example just because of the alternating 5s. Let's do one more example. So here we can again use synthetic division because we do have a linear factor with a leading coefficient of 1. So we're going to set this up. In this case, k equals 4. So we're going to put 4 over here and set up our upside down division. Now we're going to write the coefficients in constant. However, we have our 3, 2, we're missing the, the x. So we're going to have a 0x in here we don't want to forget about and then plus 8. So when we write our coefficients, we're going to say 5, negative 6, 0, 8. And we bring down the first leading coefficient. Now we multiply. 4 times 5 is 20. Negative 6 plus 20 is 14. 4 times 14 is 56. 0 plus 56 is 56. 4 times 56, oh boy, that's 112, must be 224. And 8 plus 224 is 232. So when we go to write our quotient, which we already has the name f of x, so we're going to say f of x equals, and remember this is the leading coefficient and it's reduced by one degree from the dividend. So it's going to be 5x squared plus 14x plus 56 plus our remainder 232 over x minus 4.